Along the paths we parted ways I walk the night You tread the day And we forgot We slept in knots All on the sunset coast We shared our meals We shared our songs By candlelight Or by the sun I know you've sung one thousand more Oh, since the time you've gone Hello everyone, this is Chad Redding here Beautiful, beautiful fall day here in south central Pennsylvania. I'm in one of the uh, county parks shooting this video. I've reshot and shot this video numerous times. Uh, tried to do it different ways and I just need to do it the way I knew how to do it which is right here in the woods. It is we are just starting to hit peak color here in south central Pennsylvania. It beautiful out right now it's not real hot not real cold wish it was a tinge cooler but it's okay you know it's not bad out of here at all so the reason I'm shooting this video the reason I'm sitting on this ridge right now here in the middle of the woods which really you don't need a reason to be in the middle of the woods but here we are <laughs> it's just beautiful is this thing right here this is something I've been lugging around now every day. Oh, that was a little bit of a weird crow. That was a crow we just heard. So we're in a place called Hex Hollow here in uh, York County. It's infamous for a lot of different things. If you wonder why Hex Hollow is infamous, check out Strange Familiars podcast. For those of you who are Strange Familiars fans, you know why. <laughs> Anyways, like I was saying, the reason we're here today is this thing here. And uh, this is a piece of gear that I have been using hard. I mean using every day for probably close to two years now. I've been wanting to shoot this video, like I said, and I just... Couldn't seem to find the right words or the right place, but today I decided I was going to do it, and here we are. Anyhow, what is this? This is a backpack, obviously, or a rucksack, whatever you want to call it, and it is made by my friend Jay Hercules over at Opossum Pouch Soft Goods. And what happened was about two years ago, I contacted him. I needed a new day ruck okay a new ruck to go back and forth with me to work every day to do day trips like this to uh, be multifunctional and I was using a German mountain pack and basically it gave up the ghost uh, we used that thing every day and the strap started tearing and it wasn't working anymore so I needed something different. So I contacted him and I told him what I wanted. And he told me about this design that he had. And what it basically was is he was perusing the patrol leader book from the 1920s. The original Boy Scout patrol leader book. When he found this, this uh, plans for a rucksack. And it was called the Campo Sack. And it was really cool. You know, it, it, it's, there's not hardly anything. Matter of fact, I don't think there's anything really modern even close to it. I would say the closest would be, honestly, would be the, the Alice pack. Though this thing is different in that it doesn't have as many pouches as the Alice pack. Boy, these crows are really raising the cane. And they're not happy with me being here right now, but they'll get over it. Anyway, anyhow. So he basically took these, this design, these plans... And what it was is this basically was plans was how to make your own campo sack is what they call it, which was basically a rucksack for uh, for Boy Scouts or for leaders or you know whoever. And 
that really caught my attention because I'm somebody who likes vintage gear or vintage style gear, which is what this is. I have a lot of vintage pieces myself. And, you know, that really piqued my interest. So he said, look, I'll make you one and I'll make it different. So basically he made this and it, it was a, a design he had already made. He had already sold to numerous people. So he made me this one in this red wax canvas, which I really dig. You know, it's really cool. It's got a, it's got some personal touches too. It's got these coyote teeth beads on it. You know, just, um, he personalized it for me this time. But it's still, the basic design on this is still the same one that if you were to go to a site or go to one of the gatherings that he is at that, that you'll find. So, what makes this thing unique? What makes this so cool compared to like something else you could buy? Well, the cool thing first off is the, is the, the heritage it has of being a piece that was designed after a heritage piece. Because it is a heritage piece. It's insanely tough. Um, I have been dragging this thing, like I said before, all over the place. It's been riding in the back of my Forerunner. Uh, it's been riding on my back on my motorcycle at 60 plus miles an hour or faster. So I use this as my main motorcycle pack. Uh, it goes back and forth with me every day to work. I throw it on my bag. It gets thrown on one shoulder. It gets thrown in the back of the truck. It gets dropped on the ground. It gets, it's been scratched by, by thorns. It's been dragged all over South Central Pennsylvania and beyond. It's gone to West Virginia. It's gone all kinds of crazy places. Um, investigations with strange familiars. And it has served me well. It has been uh, a really good piece. So the first feature about it is, obviously, is this, let's put it here on my final lap so you can see a little better, is this toggle feature. So this is a toggle closure, which is pretty standard on all of the uh, Possum Pouch soft goods packs. You know, it has, it has these wooden toggles with paracord with this slide to make it tight. And it just simply, you just twist it like that through the leather. And that's how you open it up. Now, this is the main flap, okay? So basically, this pack consists of the main flap, which is a giant pouch unto itself. And then basically just a big rucksack. There are no side pockets. The only pocket would be the, the flat closure. So if you're somebody that does like a bunch of outside pockets and stuff like that, this might not be for you. I was one of somebody who was like that. And I tell you what, I got used to it real quick. So uh, I normally on my packs, I prefer like a main rucksack. And then I kind of like side pouches, put stuff that I could get to every day. But I've learned how to use this pack and I've fallen in love with it. Absolutely, absolutely love it. So, you know, it has the toggle closures, which are really cool because no, it's not gonna open up as fast as like, like the clips on like, you know, fast X buckles or anything like that. But the cool thing about it is that it's easily replaced. So, you know, if this were to rip, you know, if you were to use, lose this piece of wood, or I actually have another pack that uses the same closures. I replaced it with deer antler toggles. So you can actually customize it a little bit, make it more your own. So if you were to lose this toggle, as long as you have some cordage of some sort, you could still tie this shut till you get back. Any good woodsman in the woods worth his salt could make another toggle and you know, with a little bit of paracord, we'll be able to fix this. So it's super easily repairable and super easy customize. If I wanted to change out this color of the, of the paracord, I could easily do that. I could also make the paracord longer, you know, extend it. If I wanted to be able to put something underneath this flap, you know, and this was too short on the bottom toggle, I could easily just put in more paracord. So I love that, fat, I love that uh, feature of his packs. Um, yes, it's not super quick to undo, but the cool thing is, you know, it's strong, it's durable. And like I said, I've been using this, using this thing for two years, going on three, and you know, pushing that toggle in and, in and, out, of, in and out of that leather closure. And so far, you know, it, it's been holding up great. The materials Jay uses is, is really strong, really strong, and his stitching is just really awesome. So the first thing you have is this huge 
flat. As you can see, we're gonna undo the bottom down here so you guys can see that. I have it tight, that's why it's a little hard to undo. So just simply flip it like that. So as you can see, huge, huge pocket just on this, this flap. You know, um, what I typically put in there is things that I want to get to during the day. Uh, I have some EDC gear I put in there. You know, keep I keep uh, usually a flashlight, stuff I want to get in there. If there's like a um, water bottle or something I want to get in there real quick, I'll stuff that in there. I've had my canteen here on the side. I mean, it's 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 pretty big, as you can see. I got a bunch of stuff in there. You know, it, it works really well. And the flap is really long. So you can easily get a bed roll or something underneath there. You know, even when it's, it is full. So that's, that's really cool. You know, there aren't too many packs that have huge flaps like that. You know, especially flaps with that much capacity. So we're going to hook this back up. And we'll go into the next thing. So the next thing pick up the flap has this really cool closure now I have a German sleeping pad slash sip pad whatever in here it kind of helps stiffen it up um, normally I don't have that in like during the like for for work and stuff like that when I'm taking this back and forth and work I don't have that in when it's on my back to ride the motorcycle I don't have that in but it, it's still very comfortable very very comfortable pack you know, the way he has the, the shape of it just kind of conforms to your back and, it, and it's just comfortable, at least for me. As you can see, huge, huge opening, massive. I have a ton of stuff in there. I'd say the capacity of this one is probably, I'd say about 35 liters is roughly maybe almost 40. It's probably a little more with that with that actual flap. Uh, what's cool is the way these um, the drawstring closure is. It kind of has this unique. It kind of folds up like an envelope, which I thought was really neat, you know. And it just it closes really well, super sturdy. That's another thing I like about this thing. And I keep saying sturdy because I just can't say enough how strong this thing is. Because like I said, I've been beating the crud out of it for two years. I mean, every day this thing gets used. Um, so yeah, you have a huge bucket opening. However you want to lay it out. I mean, if, if it was me if, and I was using this for like a bushcraft pack or, you know, a day trip or an overnight or something, you could probably easily do three nights out of this pack, honestly, with another feature I'm going to show you here in a minute. Um, just use different bags for different things. Just pack it really smartly. You know, a good uh, woodsman really knows how to set up his pack. So that's that's a skill, actually, believe it or not. Uh, it has the same toggle closure, which works phenomenal. On the bottom, it actually has leather things that you can put your straps through or paracord to tie a bedroll in the bottom so this will accept a bedroll or a tent or any other soft thing you want to carry on the bottom of your ruck so it does have that now one of the cool features and this is kind of uh, across the board for a lot of Jay's different packs is the adaptability now I personally have this set up with Alice straps as you can see, these are Alice straps. This is like phenomenally strong. If this thing was gonna fail, it would be here. And at these leather D-rings where the straps go through. But it's just been, you know, holding up fantastic, you know, for every, every day use. And um, so it will accept any strap. I actually have Alice straps on here. You could probably get another set of straps Jay is actually starting to manufacture like an Alice style strap with a lot of padding. I actually have another one of these packs in brown, in a dark brown, that I just got from him with that Alice style strap and 
I should have brought it up here on the ridge, but I didn't want to carry two backpacks up on the ridge. And it, they're really good. I really like them, you know. They, they work really well. Uh, why did I select Dallas straps? For a day ruck, I think Dallas straps work well on this. You know, they're, they're adaptable. I'm sure you can get some other kind of strap, you know, the Malice straps. You know, there, there's a ton of different companies that are making Alice straps, or you can just go like I did with the, you know, the military surplus route. So it, it accepts different straps. He, it, usually, it does come with, the, with like kind of a twill strap, more like, you know, kind of like a, a cotton twill. And then I don't know if the Alice straps are an add-on or not. I'm not too familiar with that because that's just something he just came out with. On the bottom here, it has like a little tunnel like here. So it can accept some kind of belt. Or that's also probably where you would put like a strap to mount it to. Here we go. An Alice frame. So as you can see, it's got this huge pocket on the back. And what that's for is so this pack will mount onto an Alice frame or any or any other kind of equivalent frame to an Alice frame. I don't think it would, honestly won't fit on a Molly, but any kind of frame that's designed for an Alice style pack or a pack that has that Alice pocket, this will fit on. So this will go on an external frame. So if you were to put this on an external frame, say an Alice frame or some other equivalent, you could probably at least do three days with this thing. Or depending on who you are, you might be able to do more. So it's got enough capacity. And with the frame, you could carry more stuff, carry more gear. Um, I actually have the Alice kidney belt and belt on here. That's That gives me a little support. And it also, when I'm on the motorcycle, it helps stabilize the pack, keeps it nice and solid. And I just ran the kidney belt through the little tunnel there. But you could probably, you know, that that is probably about... You could probably get a good inch twill through there. So if you had another kind of, of waist belt, you could get through there. So what more could you ask for <laughs> in a bushcraft style pack or the Campo Sack? The original Campo Sack actually didn't go on a frame. That was something he added. He brought up to date because a lot of, you know, that some of us like external frames. I personally do. Um, but, you know, I, it's very stiff right now. You could probably get a board on the inside. There's no pocket for to slide a stiffener in. But with, you can see with the German pad, the German pad fits perfectly in there. And it's not shifting or moving. It just fits perfect within, within the uh, stitching of the pack. And it definitely made it it's stiffer. So if you do need that stiffening, you could probably put some kind of of uh, foam or something of that, some kind of stiffener to stiffen the pack up if you don't want to go with a full-blown external frame. That just shows you the adaptability of this thing. Now, Jay calls this the Backo Pack because he doesn't like to use the original name of, of what it originally was. It was originally the Campo Sack, but now, or the Campo Pack. This is now the Backo Pack. So, that's pretty much it. It's a simple, sturdy ruck. I mean, it's simple. It doesn't get much simpler than this. Two big pockets, a giant flap, which you can see. That's huge. You know, you could get a lot underneath there. And it's and that's with it up against. You know, it probably it would come around. Um, I have not used it in an overnight yet. That's coming. But I have used it on multiple day trips hiking in, carrying gear, you know, a couple miles to do like a day trip where I'm cooking and, and stuff like that. And it works fantastic for that. It's been super comfortable. Uh, I figured if, if, if I have any problem, it will be with these straps, but the, these Alice straps have actually been performing well. I'm probably going to update them to some kind of other strap, probably the ones that Jay makes, you know, which were, are a little wider than these and they're a little thicker in padding. So I'm probably going to do that. Uh, as far as belts go, like I said, you can probably run different belts. I'm just using the simple kidney pad with the uh, with the waist belt. You know that, that it kind of floats there, and it, it it really makes it comfortable when I turn. You know this thing's been solid on my back. 
without the uh, stiffener. And it's just been a really great piece. So, you know, if you want to get one, okay, this, no, two weekends from now, November 8th through 10th at the Georgia Bushcraft Gathering, Jay is going to be there. He will have some of these packs, okay? He told me that. Uh, as far as on his website, I think after Georgia Bushcraft, he's going to probably have more on his website. So uh, try and get on there and get some. Also, another product he's going to have, and this is one. You guys have seen this before. I have it in here, so I'm just going to pull it out. And this is another piece I use a lot, as if you can tell, because it's dirty. Is this simple little haversack. It's all twisted up. This is the uh, holler sack, also by Possum Pouch Soft Goods. Have you seen this already in another video where I've been like, you know, this is basically my day bag. You know, I carry this on like light scouting trips and all that. Also use it when I'm teaching classes and all that and I need to get into materials and all that. Um, <laughs> another good piece of gear. I mean, what what more can you ask for? This canvas has this orange backing, which has multiple uses. You know, you can use it for signaling. Uh, if if I had to, I could take the stuff out of here. And it has D rings Oops. right here at all the corners. So I could actually, if it was hunting, I could put this on the back of one of my pack or strap it with stra with paracord or other straps around my actually on my back. So you could use this as a little backpack if you wanted to. Uh, it's not as big as some of his other haversacks, but I found it's plenty big. I mean, it's got a traditional, you know, pocket in the uh, flap. And basically it's just an old, just a big old bag. And it works really well. So that's another thing. Uh, I know these run about, so how much is this stuff? These run about 50 bucks, and for a really good piece of canvas gear that's gonna last you, like, I've had this now for probably, oh my, going on three years or more. I've had it longer than I had the uh, backhoe pack. And I've just been beating the snot out of this thing, too. You can tell it's dirty, it's cruddy. But that's another good piece of gear, but, yeah, so he will have those also at Georgia Bushcraft, November 8th through 10th. But, you know, keep an eye on his website. If you want a really good rucksack that's going to get the job done, the sun's starting to set on us right now. So, you know, we're losing light. But if you need a really good rucksack that's going to get the job done for you and you like it simple and tough and rugged, which, what more could you want? This, you know, pick up one of these, you know. I don't know what else to say. I've been using it for two years, going on three. You know, it, it's a really awesome, awesome rucksack. You know, I, I use it every day. Not lying to you, I've used it every day. I mean, the only thing I've added to it, like I said, was I stitched my patch on, added the Alice straps, Added the Alice uh, kidney pad and belt, and it's just been working fantastic for me. I, I can't ask for anything more here. So, um, so check it out. Check out Opossum Pouch Soft Goods. Uh, I will see. They, they usually come. These are usually greens and browns. You'll see a lot of greens and browns. Every once in a while, you'll see a, a strange color like this. I think he had a purple one and a pink one. At the gather thing, which was kind of cool. A lot of people actually liked that, so, so it was really neat. But check out his other rucksacks. Uh, get the holler sack. Oh, cost on this. About 250 is where he's running with these things, which honestly, for something made in the United States, made in West Virginia, counter to what other people said, it is made here in, in the United States. U.S. sourced materials made by a small business, you know, one of our actually fellow woods folk that's trying to make it, what more could you ask for? You know, support a guy, support a, support a U.S. business, support a local 
you know, a small businessman, support a fellow woods person. You know, that's that's what I'm all about. And, you know, it's I can't I can't test it anymore. <laughs> I can't do any more than what I've already done to it other than throw it off this ridge down the cliff. I mean, it, it's I, I <laughs> it's been on a motorcycle at multiple, you know, 100 miles an hour with stuff bounce, bouncing off of it. You know, I, I throw, I tear it back and forth to work every day. What more could you ask for for something? You know, and it just holds up super, super well. And it just develops more character. You know, it's got scratches all over it, but that's, that's what it's about. You know, use your gear. Buy it. Don't just let it sit there. You know, put this stuff through its paces. That's what it's for. So, and, you know, he's always improving. I think now the new ones, instead of just these little leather tabs, it actually has a leather like a leather plate with the tabs coming up. So it's actually, the new ones have actually improved. This this is a little old bit of an older design. So, but yeah, once again, check out um, Jay's gear at Apostle Pouch Soft Goods. Go see him at Georgia Bushcraft, November 8th through 10th. If you're in the South Central Pennsylvania area, here in York County, near the river in Pennsylvania, hit me up. You know, say hi. I don't mind saying hi to people. Um, and keep an eye out for more on Ruck Rabbit Outdoors. We have more coming. A lot more cool stuff coming. Uh, the Etsy shop has been a little dormant lately, but we are going to be throwing stuff on that. Uh, we're going to have some special edition stuff on the Etsy shop that you know are only available for maybe two weeks or something like that. I've picked up some really cool vintage gear and vintage, vintage wool and vintage clothing. So... And we have something else, too, that's coming. I'm not going to announce it, but it, it's in the works. It's something I've been alluding to for over a year now, and it's going to happen. You know, the, the everything's, the bits and pieces are coming together now, so it's just a matter of time. So, if you like what you see, like and subscribe. You know, check out um, us at Instagram, uh, Facebook, where else? Here on YouTube, feel free to message us. We will respond to you. And, you know, also check out Strange Familiars. I've been a little quiet lately there, but I've had some stuff I had to deal with. You know, I've, I've had some some business, things I need to done to grow my own business. So, also, if you're in South Central Pennsylvania between April and September, look us up at Sunnywald. We do classes there at Sunnywald. Free classes. Come by. You know, we do a little forage walk. So, come by and say hi. So, till next time. Fair weather and safe journeys. And get out, especially in this weather. You know, it's beautiful. Enjoy fall. So whatever you do, you know, just get out and enjoy the woods. See ya. It is flown away, my friend, I think, on you today. I hope sometimes you sing my songs all on the sunset coast.